Initially, I was really impressed by the intensity of, of the colors and the way in which the pictures captured the overall scene, not just the details of the scene, but the magnitude of, of the bridge itself. What Jamie's done in recording the construction of the bridge is to remind us of those moments when it wasn't a foregone conclusion that this bridge was there. And he gives us a glimpse into the men who built the bridge. This was a process of all these improbably small steps that result in this phenomenal bridge. When you look at those pictures that show you the bridge coming into being, you have a new appreciation and a new, very deep understanding of the fact that these things don't just spring completed into full form, but they have to be grown and constructed. Early in 2009, the economy slowed down and the studio became quiet. I thought rather than sit around worrying about where the next job might come from, take advantage of it. So the thought was to go out on a road trip, photographic road trip, with the intent of just looking, just seeing, essentially going back to my roots as a photographer, which was a visual exploration. So I asked Mike Sakis, who was my first assistant, if he'd like to come along. A couple days out, we decided to go across Hoover Dam. Basically, I'd said, I haven't been across the dam since I was a kid, let's go. And we arrived there at dusk, and I saw Lake Mead first that had very striking banding of the mineral deposits on the bank as the level of the lake has decreased over the last several years. Then I turned around and saw the bridge. I had no idea the bridge was there. So here were two arches that were coming out from opposite sides of the canyon, as the sun was going down, I looked at Mike and I said, what do you think about staying here for 24 hours? This thing's pretty interesting. And that was the beginning of the project. Having the privilege to design a bridge in the shadow of Hoover Dam, which would be visible to the world, is once in a lifetime opportunity, so any bridge engineer would be quite excited to be able to do that. I was certainly looking forward to doing something bigger and better than I'd done before. The original drafting and drawings, the layout of the bridge, all of the definition of the basic character I did myself with my own hand. The demands of this bridge, because of the high profile, the intensity of the, the concentration that uh, was required to be able to put this bridge together with all of the challenges involved. It was a 24-7 project. So coming to the canyon and coming to the bridge was in a way like a perfect marriage of my interest in the landscape, but in particular the man-altered landscape. There's a range between what I call the narrative and the metaphoric. The narrative being a clear, descriptive way of expressing or showing what's going on with the construction of the bridge. Metaphoric being ideally a way to move the image visually over to where it's something other than what it literally is, where you might have an emotional response or connection to the image in another way. So my goal was always to move within that realm and find a way as often as possible that I could move that image over to an area that would potentially pique people's curiosity in a stronger way than to just describe the bridge visually. Well, my appreciation for the photography is, is 
a, a lot in the character of the photography, just the quality of the imagery and just the permanence of, of those moments in time as we're building the bridge that over time you lose if you don't have them recorded as Jamie has recorded them. One of the things that, his, uh, that Jamie's images does capture is the clarity and the cleanness of the profile of the bridge especially his imagery against the dam, really shows how we achieve the openness and the, the compatibility with the dam and the view of the dam, complementing it without competing or blocking it. The achievement of the dam is hard to surpass. That was a monumental undertaking and a tremendous civil engineering achievement. It's a different time, but the same place, and, and the two really represent several generations of maturation in the engineering profession of getting to the point of being able to put a concrete bridge, a concrete arch across the canyon. In the day of the dam, the technology didn't exist to build this bridge. I feel that we've accomplished the goal that we set out to accomplish in, in traversing the canyon with an efficient economical structure that really has achieved the aesthetic goals that we had for complementing Hoover Dam and sitting respectfully in that historic site. I find as a photographer this bridge in this canyon to be photographically compelling, intriguing, dynamic. I also, as the kid in me, is like trying to imagine what it's like to build a bridge like this. This is an erector set on steroids. But beyond that, I see how the way that photographs that were taken of Hoover Dam and the Great Depression impact how we remember Hoover Dam, how we remember the construction of Hoover Dam. And if I can apply my eye in a concentrated and aesthetic way, it can serve as an historic document of that. And that will be the way or a way that we remember the bridge. The reason that we create and the reason we try to communicate through our photography or other creative media is to find a way to tap into something that's important and essential about ourselves and to be able to communicate that hopefully successfully to other people that they might also connect up with that. But there is an intrigue, there is a curiosity, there is a surprise, there is something in them that oftentimes connects with the bridge beyond that literal, here's a picture of a bridge. It's very easy to second guess ourselves and what we do. There are so many amazing creative people out there that if we compare ourselves to others, it's challenging. But if I can hold on to the gift of believing in my ability to take on a subject with passion, with time, with commitment, and see an interesting and compelling end result from it. That understanding for me is the big lesson coming out of this. This project is very much about process. While on one hand, it's about the bridge at Hoover Dam, and it's about this feat of engineering, it's mostly a, a story about people. It's about the people who designed the bridge. It's about the people who built the bridge. It's about that construction process and the story of the bridge coming into being. It's also a story about Jamie Stillings and his process of pursuing the construction and looking for more opportunities to make pictures and getting greater access and thinking about the technological hurdles he faced and how he could make the pictures that would convey his sense of awe and the passion that he felt in his heart and making that come through in the photographs that we see today. One of the functions of art is to show us people who without promise of financial reward and without expectation of fame, give themselves to something that's about expression. The way in which we as a culture benefit from those people who have chosen to give their lives to the pursuit of art is something that we all benefit from. And one of the reasons that we're drawn to art experiences. <laughs>